Hello! Today I thought I'd change things up a bit and have an experiment with this UV resin. I haven't really done much in the way of resin and so I thought today would be a good start. It's not a big amount, it's only 200 grams, but I have read that resin does have a shelf life and so I probably should use this up before it goes bad. So I don't really know what I'm doing but I'm just going to make it up as I go along and let's get into it. I bought some little molds when I picked up the resin and I have these ones in my collection along with a couple of larger ones which is this round coaster mold and also this monstera leaf. I also have some bits and pieces to mix into the resin. I've got a few things I found in Kmart of all places. These little pots of flaky bits that are shiny. Somewhere in my studio I've got some large bottles of glitter and I put them in a safe place. I can't find them anywhere. If I find them I'll bring them into this. If not I'll just have to not use glitter. Wah! Very sad. But anyway at least I picked these ones up. And I also found these cute little resin mixin pictures which you stick on. I also have a few other bits and pieces that I found in my stash. These tiny little dice beads. I also have some little flower bead things some butterflies and this might be too big as well but I had this gold flower which could possibly sit into something and some of that gold liquid metal paint that I got in New Zealand I might end up painting a bit of that into the resin we need to figure this out as I go along I also have a mask it's a P2 mask so this one should protect against fumes I will also be sitting quite a way back from it once this light goes on so that I'm not breathing in anything toxic it does smell I have found this from experience and if you're using a large quantity I really recommend wearing some kind of respirator or ventilator so that you don't breathe in the fumes they are very very toxic of course you can use gloves and things like that I think I'll be okay because I'm only using tiny things today but I will be switching to voiceover because I will be wearing this mask and it will be very difficult to talk through it <laughs> For my first one I decided to go with the coaster and put that big old metal flower thing in it. It just fit underneath the lip of the mold so I figured I'd be able to fully encase the whole thing in resin. So I took that out and started filling up this mold with a nice thick layer of resin. Now can I just say that this entire video is a comedy of errors? If you've come here with the hopes of learning something, you're probably looking at the wrong person here because I had no idea what I was doing and I made such a mess. I think there's something wrong with every single one of the pieces I made. <laughs> so it's kind of embarrassing but I thought I'd show them anyway because it is a bit of fun and you might get a laugh out of this. So what I was doing was trying to coat the base of the mold with a thinnish layer of the UV resin and I found this handy little tool to help me spread it out. At the same time I kept trying to pop the bubbles so that I wouldn't have any in my final result. Spoiler alert, there are bubbles, doll. I think I'll have to speed my footage up because it did take me a long time to do this. I was struggling to get rid of the bubbles but I did my best and I added in some more resin just to make sure the whole of the base was fully coated. So what I was trying to do here was add in a ring of gold paint around and it just wouldn't work. So I learned very quickly that dropping the paint off from the pokey tool was absolutely useless and I did find a workaround a bit later. But for the moment you can watch me struggle with this as I tried to put a spiral in there. And might I add that resin is incredibly sticky so I probably should have worn some gloves because by the end of this whole session I was absolutely covered in it and I really had to wash my hands about five times to get all of the yuckiness off them. Not the best thing in the world. Entirely my own fault. I gave up on the spiral and just stuck the flower back in making sure it was embedded in that resin quite nicely and then I added a little more resin just to make sure that was fully covered. I managed to spill those little gold mix and things all over the table, par for the course really, so I just scattered those in because I wanted them to also be embedded in the resin. And I think it looks quite pretty like this. They're really neat. They're like chunky bits of glitter. And because they're quite large and heavy, it's easy enough to move them around to where one wants them to be. So once I was satisfied with how it looked, I put it under the light. Warning, this is really bright. 
Sorry about this. It's so purple, it's hurting my eyes just to look at that. So I'm cutting out the rest of the footage, but the light is on a 30 second timer and I had to spin it a couple of times just to make sure all of it got covered. It had set pretty well at this stage. I'm just tapping it to make sure it's hard. So that worked okay. Possibly my best idea of the day was to paint over that really terrible spiral with the gold paint and make it look a lot thicker. This worked really well and I wish I'd just thought of this in the first place. That gold paint is really lovely as well. I love the yellow brightness of it and it's really metallic. Lives up to its liquid metal name. I was much happier with the design once I had finished painting in that wobbly looking spiral. I think it looks pretty cool like this. Oh lordy, she's got the glitter out. I couldn't find my large pots of glitter, but I do, of course, have some small ones. From the minimal experience I have with resin, I know that glitter looks really pretty when it's inside it. It just sparkles so well, and I thought this needed something else. I just wanted to add in some glitter. I mean, any excuse to use glitter is a good one, am I right? So once I'd done that, I decided to pour over a second layer. Now, I didn't fully encase the entire flower because I had an idea for one more thing I wanted to do to it. In hindsight, I should have just kept filling up the whole thing because on the third layer, you will see what happens, which turns it into a disaster. It looks great here. I will give it that, so I should have just left well enough alone. Ugh, so annoying. I was doing so well and it all goes downhill from here. But I just wanted to make sure that it was fully encased in the resin. The center of the flower is still standing above it. I dropped in some more gold pieces so that when you look into the coaster, there will be multi layers of things suspended in the resin, if that makes sense, rather than everything being on one flat plane. Hopefully for a more 3D effect. At least that's what I was going for. So after a bit more prodding to make sure everything was immersed, I also had to add some more glitter in. The end of this little spatula thing was so good for that. And it is such a handy tool in the studio. I just picked that up locally, but I'm sure you can probably find them in a craft store. So after a second round of curing under the UV lamp, it's looking pretty good. You could see how the flower's protruding. Now I remembered that I have some little Swarovski crystals and that fits perfectly in the inside if I can ever get it to turn up the correct way. I of course then remembered I needed to put some resin in there to stick it down, so that's what I'm doing. Honestly, why can't anything be simple? <laughs> get in there already, you fiddly thing. Going in for my third and final pour, I wanted to encase the entire flower in the resin and this is where things started to go belly up because resin shrinks when it is cured and unfortunately it had come away from the edges of the mold so some of it leaked underneath it and made a right old mess on the other side of it. Oh, so frustrating. The whole thing just ended up having air bubbles in it and all sorts of other annoying things. I ended up just curing the whole thing anyway because there's not much else I could do and here's me popping it out. It's all wobbly. Oh dear, it was still sticky underneath and needed some more curing. So here's the finished result. Air bubbles and all. Ah, oh, what a pain. I was a bit disappointed by that, but I guess we live and learn. It's the only way to get better at something I find is to learn by doing and making mistakes along the way. I don't know if you can tell, but this has also gone into quite a convex shape, so it is most definitely not a flat coaster. In fact, it's rather wobbly, doll. <laughs> but I actually think it's quite pretty in spite of its many flaws, and I do love the gold flower inside it. I think that turned out really well, and I also like the gold Old swirl and the sparkly bits. That's really fun. So the potential for awesomeness is there. I just didn't quite make it on this one. Oh well, on to the next resin masterpiece. Or disaster. I'll let you judge that for yourself. Next is the skull. You know I had to try this one. And I started pouring resin into it, complete with air bubbles that I spent quite a long time popping. This one was a little more fiddly with all of those teeth and that top bit is so you can turn it into a hanging ornament, which is pretty cool. But it is very tiny and I had to push the resin into that to make sure it was all completely covered. But the thin nozzle on the resin bottle was actually making easy work of it. I decided I wanted to add one of the little sunflowers from those resin things that I got in Kmart and pushed it in there. 
kind of didn't realize until much later that it's really only on one side, as we will see. And then I decided to drop in an assortment of colors from my glitter stash. These are tiny little pots, but they are very useful and the colors are lovely and bright. I really love that magenta with the blue. I was thinking of the candy skulls when I was doing this, so I went with those sorts of colors. I also had a bit of a green in there just to mix things up a bit. And I think I also put some silver. So I was having a good time with this. But I'm very glad I was wearing the mask because I left the room for a bit and came back in and the whole studio just absolutely reeked of resin. So I had to open up the sliding door and one of the windows just to let the air flow through and ventilate the place. Even though it's the middle of winter, that helped a lot. And I'm pouring over more resin on the top without actually having cured it because after last time I decided I was just going to do all the resin in one hit rather than setting layers and then having the wet resin run underneath like the coaster. So once I had set this one under the UV lamp, it's called curing, but I keep calling it setting, I then spent quite a lot of time trying to pop it out of the mold. It is satisfying, but this one was also very finicky and it did take quite a long time to try and pull it off, especially the eyes, it was kind of stuck there. But silicon at least does not stick to resin, so it eventually came off along with a whole bunch of glitter. <laughs> so this one turned out a lot better, aside from an air bubble or two, which I can't seem to fully avoid. And I should have just left well enough alone, but you know I can't, because I really didn't like the faded look on the back side of that flower. And so I thought I was going to be clever. Yeah, you know where this is going to go. I thought I would try sticking another flower on the other side with some resin and this seemed like a really great idea except for the fact that it did not want to stay flat and there was a huge air bubble behind the flower. So I tried very hard to smother the entire thing in resin but yeah it was a bit of a nightmare. You could see me trying to spread that resin evenly over the skull to take away the edges of the flower and make it look like it's just sitting in the skull but it was okay for a moment and then it would pop up once again. So when it cured, there is an air bubble and you can see the flower is not exactly matching up with the one on the other side. There is a bit of overlap, but worst of all, there is a hideous air bubble stuck underneath the sticker and there's nothing I can do about it. We'll make sure that side stays to the back. This side's not too bad, but it is annoying that the two flowers aren't perfectly aligned. Sigh. But moving on, and my next one I wanted to try another coaster, and in my stash I found this metal owl that I have had for years and I've never known what to do with. Pretty sure it's supposed to be a necklace pendant, but I don't think I'd actually wear it. So I decided I was going to suspend this in resin. So what kind of a mess can I make this time? Well, to be fair, this one actually started off pretty well and it's probably the favorite design of everything I did today. I really love that silver and black look to the owl and so I followed that throughout the whole of the coaster. So just popping those bubbles there and I managed to get it nice and smooth this time, at least for a while. So I gently plopped that owl in. You could see it is a perfect fit. It was just so nicely sitting in there. And then I'm dropping in the silver mix-ins because they just go so well with the owl. I just love this design. I think it looks so cool. And I think if I learned anything from this whole video, it's that it's much easier to pour in all of the resin that you're going to use and then cure it all in one go rather than doing layers. Or at least if you're going to layer, try not to get the resin going over the edge of it because it does shrink away from the mold a little bit once it cures. So of course I must have glitter as well and I'm adding in some silver glitter. I even added in some black glitter which I found. These little pots came from a face painting shop and I bought them years ago when I was doing photography and they are actually cosmetic grade glitters so you can put them on your skin but they also work really well for other projects. So I'm basically filling up the rest of it with a whole bunch more of that resin. My glitter did move around a bit, but that's not too bad. The worst part is that the owl moved and I didn't notice until it had cured because when I slid it underneath the curing lamp, it all went to one side and you will see this very soon. It's such a disaster. It would have been perfect if I hadn't had that one mistake. Can you see how it slid to the top there? Wah. 
but somehow I didn't manage to film myself popping it out of the mold. So at the end of the video, I will be showing all of the things that I made today, including this one. Next up is the Monstera leaf, and I thought I would add some green decorations to this one. But firstly, it's time to pour in a nice layer of resin so that all the bits that I add in have something to sit on and they're not directly against the mold because then when I unmold it, they won't be covered in resin and that would be devastating. <laughs> so it's better to suspend them in the resin so that you don't get any rough edges on the outside. Once again, that tool was excellent. It probably doesn't make much sense putting flowers in a leaf, but I just thought they would look quite pretty. And I think it made an interesting looking pattern. I just put them in randomly in spots where they would fit, then jiggled them about a bit just to make sure they were sitting nicely. I was going to choose this lighter green glitter, but then I decided the darker green would go better with the flowers. It was almost the same color. But for some unknown reason, I thought it would be a really great idea to open the pot of glitter over the Monstera leaf. And here's what happened. Oh my god. <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> Oh no! So yes, I kind of stuffed that up royally. Why would I do such a stupid thing? I don't know. But anyway, I just kind of pulled the glitter out and pushed it around, trying to rescue it as much as possible. It didn't work out too badly in the end, but it wasn't exactly what I would have liked. Honestly, you can't take me anywhere. I am so clumsy sometimes. But I figured I had nothing left to lose now, so I just chucked in some more green glitters in different colours just to break up the monotony a little bit and add a bit more interest. Of course, I had just as much glitter on the desk by the end of this because it is never able to be contained. And then before I could make a mess any further, I just filled the whole thing up with more resin, pushed everything around because as you can see, everything does move once you add the resin on top and cured it under my light. Last one, while that other one was curing, I decided to fill in the kangaroo because I had to have at least one of those. There was a little heart on the kangaroo and that's so that you can turn it into a keychain or something like that. At this stage in the day, I was pretty much over it, so I figured I would just use plain old glitter in this one to make it easy on myself. I really like that pinky purpley one, so I wanted to add more of that in. I didn't end up using the dice beads in this video, unfortunately. I want wanted to but they just were a little bit too tall and I don't think this mold would have actually fit them in so I'll find another use for them maybe I'll make a coaster just with dice beads but for today I think these little pots of glitter were my safest bet. Once I chucked enough on I then just filled the rest of it with the last of the resin there and stirred it around a bit just to get that glitter to disperse a bit more evenly and mix the colors in a little bit. It's a very plain one, but sometimes simple is best. In fact, it usually is, and it was very hard to mess this one up. So I slowly popped it out of the mold. It was a little bit challenging around its feet because you could see how skinny some of those parts are and peeling it off that heart in the middle was very difficult too. But I got there eventually and here we have the kangaroo. I have to say the resin itself is lovely and clear, although you could see just a little bit of marking on the back and that's because I don't think it's set for long enough. Most of them still felt quite sticky so I set them in the sun for quite a long time and that really helped as well. And now I will show you all of the creations that I made today. First up is probably the least successful one, understandably because it was my first one. Lots of air bubbles, it's very wobbly, but otherwise I really like the gold colours in there. I like the paint swirl and the chunky metal mix-ins that I got from Kmart. Next is the skull. And this turned out a little more successfully except for that really annoying air bubble and I'm not so keen on the flower stickers. I just didn't care for those in the resin as much but I really do like the glitter and I think the shape of it is really cool. I'll hang it up somewhere in the studio. Now my third one is very disappointing in that the owl moved at the crucial moment of setting otherwise I really like how it turned out. It looks awesome suspended in resin and I might have to try something like this again. It's also not very flat though you can see there and I have some air bubbles. On the back it doesn't look so good because it's just the plain silver, but I reckon I could use that as a coaster somewhere in the house. 
I also made a little kangaroo charm with some different colored glitters. It's quite cute. I would like to make some more of these and maybe go a little more adventurous with them, but you could see that heart-shaped hole in there which you can use to hang it from something, which I think is quite nice. And last up is my favorite one, even though I made a mess of the glitter. That monstera leaf is so neat. I really love the shape of it, so for the most part I'm happy with how it turned out. So here are my wonderful creations for today. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you have a favourite? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a bit of a laugh with this because I certainly did. And I did have some fun even though they aren't exactly ideal. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button and leave me some fun comments. And I will see you all again really soon in my next video. Take care out there and have a wonderful day. Swatch you later. Bye.